Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This one is for Olympic Soccer on the PlayStation 1. It's possibly the greatest football game you have never played or ever heard of, but maybe not. But let me just let this intro play out and then we'll crack on with some gameplay. Right then, so a pretty standard kind of intro, I think, to a PlayStation 1 game from back in the day. Now, as you can see from the menu selection, uh, menu screen, there's Arcade, Olympic, Exhibition, and League. Four different modes there. The Arcade just being what I'm going to do now. I'll go into that in a second. The Exhibition, uh, I think, is just a friendly. The League, um, self-explanatory, a league system. And the Olympic is a bit like a cup system. Almost like a World Cup, but obviously Olympics. And you just, uh, it's like a... A round by round kind of thing. Now this is arcade mode and it's basically I think all teams and I should really have done this research before there's either 32 or 64 teams or a similar amount and basically the premise behind arcade is to play your first opponent, beat them, beat the second, beat the third, beat the fourth and just keep going until you've eliminated everyone um, which is a lot harder than it might appear. Now obviously the, the opponents start off relatively weak like we're playing Jamaica here, I've chosen Brazil and um, Obviously, it progresses. So towards the latter half, you, you start pitching up against the likes of Brazil, I guess, Argentina, Spain, Italy, England, whatever. The usual suspects. So, uh, like I said, just playing against Jamaica here. Now, this match is in its entirety. I think it's around about 10 minutes, maybe five minutes each way. And then what I'm going to do at the end of this particular game, um, where I go on to round two, I'm, I've basically cut it down to like a... a Cut it down to a highlights package, like watching, it's like watching TV, Match of the Day or Sky Sports or something. And I've just put the best clips from the next game without me commentating over the top of it and instead having the proper commentator, um, which is Alan Green in the game. Um, and I kept that in because he comes out with some completely stupid one-liners. And all the best ones he uses aren't in the clip that I've got on here. But even though his best ones are, there are still some... Or still some uh, funny ones. So, um, yeah, that'll be entertaining. So a little bit about the gameplay. Um, in fact, I've just gone 1-0 down against a really bad team. It's kind of a funny uh, funny goal. When he headed it, he kind of went through the net, as you'll probably see here. Let's just have an, uh, another check. So I don't know what I was doing there. Gave the ball away. And <laughs> he slides through the net. So this game really is so fast and furious. It's ridiculous. And I think I started the intro there right at the start of the video by saying it's the best football game you've never played or ever heard of, or however I phrased it. And it is, I stand by that, it is the best game that you've never played. But it's also possibly the worst as well. It, it, it's got that fine balance of being brilliant, but awful. And it's so fast-paced, and it just borders on complete ridiculousness. You know, you can shoot from anywhere. Like, I mean, look at that. I mean, how obscene. Literally, you can score from your own halfway line. And the amount of swerve and bend uh, that you can put on the ball is just, is completely out of this world. Um, in saying that, there's some really nice touches to this game. I think I might have included some of them, such as when the ball hits the crossbar and it'll bounce down, or it can bounce down, hit the goalkeeper and go in, 
it can hit one of the posts, it can hit both posts and come out, or he can hit uh, post, the, the post or both posts and, and go in for a goal. So it's kind of really clever. Um, it's it little it's fine touches like that, which you don't see in a lot of games. Obviously, it's par for the course in, in the modern era, but in old games, just little subtle touches like that really help for the realism. Uh, unfortunately, the speed is completely ridiculous, but it's better being fast than being like really snail paced like a lot of football games are. Even on you know the generation such as the PS1, there's some really bad games out there. Um, like I say, the commentary as well is just infamous. Some of the uh, lines he comes out with are just amazing. And for the benefit of anybody who doesn't know who Alan Green is, uh, I mean, there's not much of a story behind it, but he is a real commentator. Uh, or what do they say in the States? Sportscaster, I think. Whatever, it's the same thing. So he, um, he works for BBC Five Live, and he's been doing that probably for the last 20-something 20, 20 years, maybe. So uh, he's, he's a pretty well-known voice, and that's what... The, I guess it's, you know, it's, that's what they do for all sports games, isn't it? They get people who are well-known to the public, whether it's a football game or an American football game or hockey, basketball, rugby, whatever. You know, they get people whose voices you're aware of, and this guy's no exception. I don't quite know um, how far down the pecking order Alan Green was when it came to getting somebody they wanted, because obviously um, there was Adidas Power Soccer uh, at the time. Oh, who did that game, Adidas Power was it? That no, wasn't Barry Davis. It was ah, who was it? Ah, oh, completely forgot. Actual, actual soccer was Barry Davis. Um, John Motson did the FIFA games, and who did Adidas Power Soccer? Ah, oh, God, he's a famous commentator. And I've completely forgot his name. Do you know what I'm going to do? How bad is this? I'm going to actually go onto Google right now, as I'm doing this, just to find out what his name was. It's a really famous bloody commentator. This is the worst commentary I've ever done on a video. Okay, so here we are. Google. Uh, Adidas Power Soccer. David someone, wasn't it? David? Oh, man. Brian Moore. Brian Moore, that's who it is. So it's David Nobody. Brian Moore. As that amazing goal goes in. So yeah, so he did that one. Uh, this is a pretty good goal, actually. Nice little sidestep. And then hitting the crossbar, bouncing down. So when you shoot, basically, if you just like kind of mess around, literally move the... Uh, the controller left and right, the analog stick. Uh, sorry, not the the D-pad, I should say. And um, and it just it can sometimes just fly all over the place. And that one, like I say, hit the crossbar, went in, and it was a bloody good goal actually. But yeah, so like I say, all the uh, all the games back in the day, and I guess it's still uh, the way it is in today's games. It probably always will be that way. But what they do is they get well-known um, commentators, well-known people to do the commentary. So, uh, yeah, there's been a few for the, the PlayStation 1. I think um, Mark Lawrenson and Andy Gray, all the usual suspects have, have pitched up Gary Lineker, etc, etc. I don't think there's anyone, you know, out there who hasn't really done one, quite frankly. So, um, let's get back to the game. So, 4-1 up. I can only remember, like, two of the goals going in, because I've just been gibbering on like a, an idiot about nothing. But it really is a fantastic game. And for me, where this game really shines is multiplayer. I mean, you can have a laugh, you know, in single player. It is fun. Um, and I certainly enjoyed it when I went back to this game for the first time in a long, long time. Um, just when I was recording this just the other day. But when you're playing it with a friend, it's it's mayhem. It's just, it really is funny. And the amount of fouls you can do, and the amount of fouls you can get away with. So essentially, they're not really fouls. But, you know, you can just slide into someone from one side of the screen to the other. And he slides across the screen and... Um, you just get away with it, and it's really funny. It's it's just a great game, uh, played at a breakneck speed. And one of the friends who I used to play this a lot with isn't a particularly big football fan, and he loved it, just for the sake of just uh, the, the fun factor, I guess. You know, you're slipping and sliding all over the place, shooting from all kinds of weird angles um, in, the, in the opposition's half, in your own half. You know, shooting from the halfway line straight from kickoff is like what I always try and do. Um, sometimes you score, usually you don't, but when it goes in, it's just funny. And it was always like a competition to see who could score the quickest goal. You see the time and they're going in the corner. You know, 50-58 currently. But it's who can get the quickest goal. It's, you know, it's always like trying to get it within like 0 0.6 seconds or something like that. Or even less. And um, yeah, it's, some of the memories, the nostalgic memories I've got of this game are uh, superb. So as you've seen there, that guy chipped in with a, with a bit of a header. Um, so the game has all the usual. I think this is a goal coming up here, actually. Or oh, maybe not. Um, but yeah, you can do your headers. You can volley the ball. 
I'm pretty certain it's got overhead kicks in there. Um, obviously, you can shoot from long distance. It's got fouls, yellow cards, red cards, penalties, free kicks, pretty much everything else. It's even got the offsides. So basically, all the rules of association football have been implemented into the game. I guess as you'd expect. But um, you know, you'd be surprised at how many games sometimes leave little things out, particularly when you go back, you know, maybe 15 years, like uh, when this game came out. And that's incredible to think that it's 15 years. It really is. I mean, I just, I literally, I remember buying this game. And even though I remember buying it, I can't remember the reason why I bought it, whether I'd seen it in a, um, a magazine or... I probably didn't, because it wasn't exactly a high-profile release. I know it's an official Olympic game, um, but, you know, it didn't get much attention. Um, I think what it must have been... This is a goal. Yeah, that was a great goal. Check the replay of that one out. Right, swerved it into the corner. I think... Going back to the PS1 days, what I used to do a lot was just literally go into the game store. Um, and Because, I mean, this is really before the days of online. Oh, well, not really, definitely before the days of people using online. Uh, certainly en masse, uh, using the internet anyway. And I would just literally go into the store with some, you know, money burning, a hole burning in my, in my wallet, just trying to uh, think of what game I could buy. And I'd, I just, you know, very regularly those days, I used to go into a store and just buy things on a whim. You know, I'd just literally look at a game I'd never heard of it before, and look at the back, and if it was relatively interesting, I'd buy it. <laughs> that was another good finish there. And I used to do that a lot, and when I look back now, man, the amount of money I must have wasted, some of the games like um, that I did buy on a whim, like Defcon 5, 50 quid, um, Psychic Detective, 50 quid, well, that one's kind of, you know goes for about 10 to 15 quid these days second hand which is obviously nowhere near the 50 quid i paid for it but you know when you look at the average ps1 game which you can probably get for maybe a couple of quid you know to see that one going for 10 15 maybe more it shows that it's one of the the harder games to to get so the ps1 is also a as a result of kind of getting this game it's it's a format that i want to get back into and my biggest problem as i've touched upon before is that i've always liked for nostalgic reasons PAL PS1 cases, even though they're terrible, you know, they're, they're easily breakable, they're thick, they're really clunky and chunky, and the NTSC ones are much easier, they're like slim dual line cases, just like an audio CD, so they're much easier to store, to stack up, they look nicer, um, but for nostalgic reasons, I always kind of prefer the PS1 um, cases, but, you know, for now, anyway, I might do PAL in the future, but for now... I'm quite happy to pick up the games that I want on um, NTSC format. But I'm definitely getting back into the PS1. And I've picked up a few games lately, and there's going to be some even better ones that I pick up um, over time. But I'm really going to try and get back into that from this year onwards. So I'm doing what I usually do now at the end of a game, and I'm trying to, my very best to score as many goals as I can. And you just saw how ridiculous that was. Um, and I, yeah, I really, I always like to try and score with like the last second. It's just a stupid little thing that me and my friends used to do. Literally try and get the latest. We try and get the earliest goal possible and the latest goal possible. So I think this game finishes now, uh, or in literally a couple of seconds. Won the game 7-1. I'm through to round two. And that's kind of how it works. You know, you beat your opponent, uh, go on to the next one and just keep going until you ultimately get knocked out. Um, so yeah, the only other thing I'd say about the game is all the players are fictional. As you can see, Branco, Danino, Mac. Gusmao, Ferdinand, obviously those aren't real people, they're just kind of generic, uh, allegedly generic uh, names to fit in with that nationality, but um, but yeah, and then, but the sequel to this game was called Soccer 97, and I believe that did have um, registered players' names, so, um, but anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this up, because like I say, what I want to do is leave this, these highlights on with some commentary from uh, Alan Green in the background, because some of the lines it comes out with are ridiculous. So you've got to get this game. It is amazing, and it's really cheap. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. It's a beauty! Whack! Look at this once more. Wasn't it wonderful? Stavli. What a great shot! Stan gets his hands to it. Oh, that hits the post. That is a shocking tackle. That was an unnecessary foul.
Guzmao. It's a beauty! It's off the crossbar! Here's Branco. That was awful! Heaven help us! Stavi with the corner. Oh, what a great header! Even I could have saved that one. Stud with the goal kick. Whack! Seeing it again, you realise what a terrific effort that was. Mikis. Oh, it's a sizzler! Oh, have another look at this. It was terrific. Mac. Oh, what a rocket! You'll want to look at this again and again, I do. They certainly won't be exchanging Christmas cards. That's a bad tackle. That deserves a booking. Now, Myrtle. Gikas playing it in. Stavri gets in a wonderful header. The goalie did everything he could and it still wasn't enough. Why not look at this again? It was terrific. This is breathless stuff. Offside. Oh yes you are. Oh, what a thump! It's the sort of goal you want to see again and again. It rockets in! The replay will help you appreciate the beauty of that move. And it's all over. Brazil gets through a difficult game.